Welcome back to Bunter Yard and the part two of this Daypole Kitmaster Interfrigo uh, build. So we need to add some colour on now. Uh, now these are basically white, so uh, there's some off-white which I uh, like to use from Vallejo. These are model colour uh, paints. Um, if you haven't got that, you can use white and uh, any sort of tan sand colour. Um, then uh, I realised that's actually empty, so uh, and we're going to mix our own. So. Um, white with a, a literally a drop um, of um, of the sand color in so we mix it like one to ten or something like that and being model color we need to thin these down and the reason I mention that is because when I started watching uh, um, videos about painting and especially using the Vallejo colors um, most uh, most YouTubers don't actually mention that um, had to use the paints and, and uh, kind of had to make it up as I went along but uh, basically if it's model color that's one with the white cap you'd need to add in thinners um, to get it through the airbrush um, otherwise uh, otherwise it won't go through particularly well or at all um, if it's a model uh, air that would be the black cap on that and you can use those straight in the airbrush you can thin them down further if you want but they are they are probably thinned and ready to go so on this one we're going to give a few light coats and you need to make sure you paint them from every single direction because there's lots of detailed sticky out bits so we add some more of the sand color or your tan color whatever um, into the mix and then um, very close uh, up um, pressures are on down to about five psi it's very very low and you can just see we're just touching in uh, making a few patches um, on the sides of the wagon and uh, this is kind of going to be the basis of some of the rust um, a bit later on you'll see so um, you'll see just a few patches here and there do it on both sides and we'll do it on the ends as well um, but very very light pressure um, really just pressing a little bit on the trigger just to make sure it doesn't come out and I've adjusted it down so it's really uh, quite a minimal amount of paint that's coming out there now, if you've not seen part one already um, I'll put the link up um, on the screen now and um, in the description down below now, if you're using your, your brush at a very low pressure you'll find that, that needle will um, sometimes get clogged so you need to keep that clean so uh, just be very careful with that not to bend the tip of the needle I'm just going to add a little bit more around the uh, just those parts, uh, those sort of edges on the uh, on the roof there. So we're going to use a thing called uh, Clear. Um, now you can still buy something like this. I think it's called Pledge now, Johnson's Pledge, uh, but it's a floor polish, and um, we're just going to use that to to cover the uh, the sides. Of the uh, of the wagon, where we're going to add the decals in a bit, and the reason we do that is that if we make it smooth, it just reduces that sort of what they call silvering, where the um, where the decals don't adhere properly to any sort of uh, rough surfaces like the uh, you know the the matte paint that we've used on this. So we can use Johnson's Clear, and you can use um, uh, a lacquer as well. So I have a gloss lacquer, um, and that will work just as well. So once that's fully dry, we can use our transfers, our decals from the pack. Now these um, these release really quickly. Um, I used to use the warm water, and, and they released in like eight or nine seconds. It was really, really fast. Uh, I was quite shocked. Um, so uh, just be uh, be aware of that. And it's on quite a thick um, sort of backing, and uh, and it's slightly off. It's not not transparent as such. It's very got a slight yellow tinge. I don't know if it's because it's old stock or just the way they are made. Um, so if I was doing uh, like a pristine model, um, the yellow sort of um, backing would kind of show up a bit because we're doing a uh, an older um, sort of relics um, van. It's really not going to 
showed too much so I'm not that bothered but unless it was pristine then I might be bothered actually so we need to get these in a straight line and we're just going to do it by eye but I'm just going to place them on uh, individually and then just sort of dock them around until uh, until they look okay now it doesn't really matter if one of them is out because um, you know parts get changed if someone swaps the door then the lettering could be out it could you know be a few inches out either way and I wouldn't be necessarily in a straight line so uh, again not too fast with that but I'll try and get it as good as I can for this one From the from the ends, if you look down the sort of the length of the of the coach of the wagon, you'll see. And then uh, be very careful with your Q-tips, otherwise you'll move it out of the way. These are kind of slippery and slidey for some reason or other. So once the decals are completely dry, um, and we've given it a coat of lacquer, we'll continue. So we are just cutting in with uh, with a brush uh, around the um, sort of chassis. Uh, now on the um, on a pristine one, this would probably be, uh, be blue to match the logo, but uh, this is going to be heavily rusted. So, uh, so we're going to do it in brown. Um, and this is a model air mahogany, I think this is. So uh, it needs a couple of coats. It doesn't cover particularly well, uh, especially on uh, on the white. But anyway, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get other bits and pieces over the top of that in a little bit, and then we need to start with our rust. Now we're using uh, airbrusher, which is um, from uh, from Mig, and it's a, it's a pre-thinned oil paint. Um, we've used this before on a few things, so I've thinned it down a little bit more um, because we're going to make this as a, a rusty patch rather than um, so any any defined streaks. And then with our uh, oil paint thinners on our brush. We're just going to blob that on, and uh, you'll see it sort of soak the the rust. It will go into a patch, and you can just leave it, and it will just get on and do its own thing if you want to. If you want a defined patch, um, or you can manipulate it once it's uh, sort of started to, to dry off or evaporate. If we get our flat brush and just drag it down, really, uh, do it too many times, but you see it creates a few of those streaks, and we want to be vertical, sort of up and down. And that gives us like that a little streaking effect. It's pretty sort of random and uh, uh, rust, rust colorish. And they've got some. Um, more sort of isolated areas of rust we'll put a couple of dots on again this is the thinned um, oil brusher if you want it more defined then then just don't use the thinners as much so that one it's uh, a little bit less uh, thin as you can see it's, quite, it's gone a little bit thicker and then we'll get our uh, our brush with our thinners on um, using a little bit less this time. That's a smaller brush you see there. So it gives a, a slightly more defined area on that particular one. And then again with our flat brush, we'll just gently drag it down. And that creates that sort of streak. So for the um, rust, uh, sort of the runs. So again, we've used the oil brusher, um, but not thinned down at all. Just sort of straight out of the out of the bottle, but using a smaller brush rather than the chunky thing that they they give you. And then um, gently drag it down. And the 
flat brush and this time has been um, sort of dampened very slightly with uh, uh, with some thinners and it just creates that sort of streak and then we can use a different color so this is a dark rust from the same sort of range uh, straight at the bottle not not thinned any further and this just gives a nice little contrast Also dot that in. That's you know that's sort of the main area. That's where um, any any rust would start from. So generally speaking, on a on a streak of rust, you're going to have uh, the streak will be like the light orange rust, and then in the centre where where the damage has uh, has occurred and the rust has started from, it will be a darker shade. And that's kind of what we're trying to simulate here. And just very gently. Um, run that down you can do this as many times as you like to build up the effect we're just going to do it a couple of times here now when you do this you'd have this model directly in front of you you have to drag down completely um, in a straight line because I'm doing this from an angle to try and get it on camera um, they go a little bit astray sometimes but uh, if you get any mistakes if you don't like just get a brush um, dampened with uh, with your thinners and then you can um, uh, just clean it back and adjust it. So that particular button's gone off. Maybe it's a little bit longer than I really wanted that to be. So with our our damp brush, we could just uh, just clean that back. That's the one of the good things about oils. Um, we can just get rid of that really, really easily, or blend it in, or just go uh, over the top, clean off the top there. So we don't really want that rust to grow up into the um, onto the roof. Now on some of the pictures that I've seen, um, it, there's, there's quite heavy, um, whether it's rust or grease around these sort of areas, I imagine it's a bit of both. So we're just going to use the dark color rust. Just, we'll just dob that in. And then we'll uh, we'll blend it in a moment, just to give um, that sort of dark, um, rusty, greasy shadow around those particular um, bits of mechanism of the door locks and the hinges. slightly larger brush with uh, with thinners on and that just just let that soak up and that just will um, just sort of fade its way in probably at the top we've taken a bit too much off might need to redo the uh, the top hinge again I think this is just about building up layers until you're until you're happy
So onto the uh, roof. Now we're going to use this um, just an orange rust tone from uh, from Vallejo, just to give a bit of a um, sort of darker colour, just a base for us to work from on the roof. So uh, just spray that on, and then with a damp brush, it's just um, dampened in in just water. It's only slightly damp, as you can see, it's not, not sort of full of water. And we just drag that across. We give it a couple of passes, and you can see that these um, sort of streaks will begin to appear. And that's good as we're going to need on the on the top um, to begin with. It's just, it's just the base to begin with. So you can see the streaks there appear on the other side, on the far side. We'll do it again on this side. And the more you do it, the more you'll take off. You can see the effect a bit better there. And we'll just add a little bit more, just uh, just to increase that uh, that effect a little bit more, I think. There's no detail on the roofs, uh, on this particular roof, on lots of roofs you get. You know, different vents and gutters and so on, there's nothing on this to uh, to sort of add um, sort of grime and um, you know different colours to 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 add some interest. So we've got to make all this from pretty much from scratch on the roof here. So we'll just uh, streak that until we're happy with that, and then similar to what we did on the side, we're just going to add in some some rust. So this is the uh, the oil brusher again. This is the um, the lighter of the rust, straight from the bottle. And we'll add them in, you know, the different places around the edges where that hatch is on either end, um, and around that hinge there, and then some of those places where you know where those uh, those ribs kind of join the roof. Um, I suppose it's you know going to be a weak point, and there's going to be you're going to get rust appearing from there. And then with the uh, with the thinners again, we'll just start to uh, sort of touch that in, and you can see it sort of running and uh, creating a, a deeper rust effect there. So we're not doing the whole roof in one go. We're just going to do parts at a time. So we're happy with that, then we can move on. Uh, if you do the whole of it, and you run the risk of it you know, drying, or you kind of find a better way halfway through, and then it's too late, and you've got to re restart. So just do a uh, you know, quarter at a time. That's what I tend to tend to work on. So you can see the oils there, just running. Uh, creating its own sort of streaks and uh, it just spread out and like you see and leave that rusty patch and if you want to uh, to blend it any further or make it sort of less obvious just add more thinners and it will uh, it will spread a little bit further and we're going to use the soft brush again just to because it's on the roof we want some uh, some water runs so where, where the weather's uh, affected that rust patch and, and direct down the side. Now if we uh, need to add some more sort of defined runs, I don't want to add this on every piece of rust we've fitted in. So um, it's just it's sort of dots here and there. And again with a very, very lightly uh, moistened brush with uh, with thinners so just drag it down and that creates those uh, those runs and the more you go over it the less you find it will get the more you'll take off and we'll just carry on uh, 
Um, probably not going to be that, you know, many rust marks on the roof, I guess. Most of the damage, you know, to the wagons are going to appear on the side, but so there's not much interest on this roof. It's uh, very, very plain. So that we just have in some of the rust effects, one of the runs. And then the final step is the same as on the side, but you're going to add in the dark rust um, into the sort of the center of the eye of the of the piece of damage, and um, just very gently streak that in. You don't need to actually streak it in; you can just leave it as a dot if you want to. If you want it to be look like a scab of oil of uh, of rust, um, but we're just going to streak ours in very slightly, and then around this hinge. Uh, again, it's like, like we did on the door. We're just going to add in a patch there of uh, this darker rust to it, simulate sort of oil or um, or the dark rust. So our next uh, part is to add in this greasy line uh, between where the body joins the chassis and. Uh, this is a dark brown with a touch of black in it, so it's really, really dark brown um, to simulate grease, that sort of thing. So wear grease and grime has kicked up from the track and from the running gear. And we've got our airbrush pressure down to about 5 PSI and we're going in very close as you can see. And that creates a, quite a fine sort of detail line rather than uh, you know a broad brush stroke. And then just trying to cover up that, you know, the join between the two, and then adding a little bit where the uh, where the ribs are, where uh, grime would have collected, um, possibly as it's uh, travel along the track, and we'll add some extra into the uh, the door mechanism. And then while that's still uh, wet before it's got a chance to dry, we'll, uh, we'll use a, a soft, damp um, brush, flat brush. Um, it's just dampened in water really, really, just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, and that just helps us to manipulate the paint into place. And we can create those um, streaks and those traffic marks. Then I did notice that um, I forgot to do these panels. These um, they're on the model. They, they look like data panels on the prototype. They look like they could be a door, but I'm not, not totally sure. But I'm just going to paint them in black anyway, and then maybe we'll think about adding some detail in there later on, chalk marks or something. But we'll paint them black just for now. And then the wheels. Before I forget to show uh, what we're going to do with these. These are metal wheels, as you know, so they've been. Uh, painted in a car primer from a spray can and then we'll paint them in um, this dark rust making sure we get uh, on both sides as well That's it. and then we'll uh, while it's still wet we can use our um, rust powders different color rust powders to um, to add some sort of texture to that and you don't need to lacquer over the top of that necessarily um, because the wet paint will already hold it in place and it's not going to get much handling. And then we just need to fit them into place. Um, always a bit worried about these, it's a quite a tight fit. I didn't want to push too hard because they um, didn't want to break the, uh, the kit we've got so far. So just being very careful to, uh, to fit these into place.
So pretty much our uh, final stage of this is to um, you get our old uh, friend the weather room powders out and you can see our palette already prepared so uh, the same as uh, same as always if you watched this before uh, so we've got immediately above is our dark rust one there and we're going to use that on the um, on the chassis really just down here and on the running uh, running gear the um, axle boxes and so on and this just adds a nice dark um, sort of aged rust to that um, to that particular area and then the weathering powder that's the humbrog dark earth we're going to use that just to soften this uh, this line here So you can see that black, um, well, the, the dark brown bit that we uh, painted, the, you know, the bottom of the chassis. Um, that line is now not, not as sort of pronounced as it was. Um, so the layers and the stages that we've done have blended that in nicely, I think. So just remember with, uh, with weathering powder, especially these particular ones, um, these have really good coverage, they, they're sort of a good adhesion, uh, so quite fine. Um, just use a little on your brush, it's a nice soft brush and just a small amount and um, it may take you quite a few uh, um, sort of brush loads as it were but um, it's easier to to add more than it is to take it off or, or disguise it once once it's on if you've uh, overloaded your brush and got too much powder on and don't forget that once you use um, a matte uh, varnish or a lacquer a bit later on some of these colors will fade back ever so slightly so that yellow on the wheel for instance um, if I get that with the uh, with the lacquer that will fade back ever so slightly so it won't be as quite as obvious and pronounced as it might look there in the uh, in the video So I think that's done okay. We need to do the other side obviously in, in a little bit. Uh, but let's uh, let's do a little bit on the roof. So we're going to use primarily the weathering powder just to do the sort of apex, you know, the top of the curve of the roof. It just adds uh, you know, just another layer in on a, on a fairly sort of plain boring roof. And then we can use some of the rust colours around that hatch area around the edges and you can see it just building up very slowly um, with small amounts of uh, weathering powder on each pass And then just to show you the uh, the ends of the wagon, ends of wagons, um, lots that I've seen, they seem to get the worst of the weathering. They, either they're not cleaned or they are, uh, because of where they are, they're sheltered from driving rain and uh, and you know the, the wagon washes, the carriage washes, the coach washes. So uh, possibly they get dirtier anyway. So we're going to cover everything in a uh, lacquer. Like I say, this is a Vallejo matte varnish just uh, from the airbrush uh, just make sure you do this from every single angle because there's lots of uh, uh, detail and bits that stick out and bits that are shielded if you if you only shoot from one angle so uh, yeah from each side from left and right and uh, 
turn the model off slightly on its side and make sure you catch it all and then wait for that to dry um, preferably overnight and that will just sealing all the weathering powders and make it easier to handle your your wagon so our very last stage on this particular one we're going to add in this um, this is uh, AK Interactive um, axle and bearings grease and it's kind of like an enamel so it, it will dry um, with a wet look so you need to put this on last rather than put the lacquer on last because if you do that that will just uh, dull it down and uh, you'll lose the effect but we're just going to add this in places where grease would collect so on some of the suspension uh, linkages and um, maybe where a seal was broken or the bottom of the you can see on the sort of where the axle sits um, grease would collect at the bottom of that and you just need to leave it basically um, science will take care of it and it will spread out and soften it out so you know if it's a subtly um, or if you want use a soft brush and then you can uh, you can blend it in yourself to make uh, an even uh, softer grease mark and that's it for this one I'll just leave you with, uh, with some other pictures and some uh, a bit of music and we'll see you next time at Bunter's Yard.